Hello, Booktube. I'm Scott. I'm now. And it's uh, Scott's birthday. So say happy birthday to Scott. <laughs> happy birthday to Scott. Yeah. Um, that was impromptu. <laughs> you knew it was coming. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my birthday is the Booker Prize Day. They did it after me because I'm such an influential critic. Critic. Yes. That's that's exactly. the reason. It's also International Men's Day for those uh, tossers who... Because uh, I'm an international man. <laughs> who, who try and derail International Women's Day. Oh, is that what around. it is? Uh, oh, is it like a men's rights activist? No, thing? it's just International Men's Day. Like, there's an International Women's Day. Um, but you oh. blokes don't do anything for it and we make a big fuss. I know, this is, isn't there something about prostate cancer or suicide or... Oh, uh, November, they do November. Yeah. But I only remember it because it's your birthday also. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's Booker Prize Day as well. But... Yes, which is way more important than international men. Yeah, but Booker Prize changes every year. Oh, does it? Yeah. Losers. Yeah, I know. So this year it's in honour of me. Okay. Anyway... That was like a complete ad lib against what we were going to discuss. Yeah, let's talk about what we're actually talking about. So, a couple of days ago, Chimamanda Nagochi Adichie has... Made an ass of herself. Yeah, pretty much. She's come out and she said that J.K. Turfling's rant was Essay. entirely reasonable. Mm. And we're talking about the Twitter essay, uh, which was just a diatribe against trans people. Yeah. And that's just, that's revolting. Yeah. So, do we treat Chimamanda Adichie the same way we have treated Turfling? Um, mostly for me. The answer is mostly. I feel a little bit worse doing that because Turfling is rich, she is well known outside of the bookish community yeah. where with Chimamanda Adichie is very well known within the bookish community but not so well known outside of the bookish community I, I'm definitely coming from a different standpoint to you, for me this is about feminism yeah. um, Chimamanda is a feminist icon as far as I'm concerned. The fact that she writes books is a little bit secondary because that's how I feel about feminism. Yeah. Um, and she writes about feminism. Uh, you can't be an exclusionary feminist. You, you just can't. We have to support our sisters. If we don't support our sisters, what do you think the men are going to do it? No. Like, no. So... This to me is worse because she spends a lot of her time writing about... Because she's got such credit in the feminist community. Yeah, because she's supposed to be doing the right thing and she's supposed to be, you know, waving the flag. Um, and she's just turned on her sisters and that's it's gross. Yeah, that is gross. Now, I feel... The other thing I feel a bit bad about this is... I am a white man for quite a lot of privilege and I want to cancel a feminist black woman. I mean, this term of cancelling is bullshit. Yes. Like, the reality is you're not going to stop her from existing. You're not going to stop her from using her platform to say whatever dumb thing she says next. Um... And I'm not going to stop anybody. Like, I'm not actually going to stop anybody from buying... Like, I can't. I, there is no way I can stop anybody from buying her No, books. but you can choose to read other things. And you can choose to give your money to other authors. Yeah. Um, I just saw this in the shot. Um, a quickie, um, Mezzi has responded, hasn't she? Have, haven't they? Um, that they have, is, is it a they or a she? I don't know. I believe they're they them. 
Well, let's use they them because it's inclusive of everybody. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's just do that. Um, I, I they did a Twitter post where they basically said a reminder that there are other people out there other than she who shall not be named who are anti-trans and then shared the article on Pink News about what Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie said. Which I actually think is a trans person advocating that we need to exclude this voice. And that... Yeah, I think... Not that they're a monolith or... That's... That's an easy saying, this is not on, isn't it? Like... Yeah, and I think that we get reluctant to like s- censor people or to but, but you actually have to not listen to bigots yes and this is bigoted speech it is it is now this isn't the first time she has landed herself in hot water um, she said something and she was called on it and she she was asked to say, are trans women women? And she said, trans women are trans women. Which is a very hard statement to argue with, I guess. But I mean, trans women are women, but they're also women, so... Yeah, like, it's... It's, it's not a one or the other no. thing, is it? Um, I, it's a very clever wordplay there. <laughs> I don't even think it's that clever, to be no, honest. No, I feel like that's political move, like... You know what I mean? a non-sense a non statement um but she clarified what she meant um in in that statement in that they had had a different experience to women it's not a typical experience and we should acknowledge that and we totally should acknowledge that for trans rights when it yeah totally when it's relevant um but like my experience is not the same as tall women. Does that mean that I have to always qualify myself as a short woman every time I talk about myself? Like exactly when it's relevant. Exactly. Exactly. Otherwise, it's just stupid. Yeah, yeah. So, under the broad umbrella of women, we have we have tall short, women, tall, short, fat, skinny, trans, cis, black, white. mothers not mothers yeah all the yep. things indigenous one-legged old young everything yeah and turfs apparently and turfs yeah so for me i'm not going to read any more chimamanda Ngochi adichie um i have read one of her novels and while it was everything i wanted in a novel i didn't like it um, and that was uh, Half of a Yellow Sun and you have not read any of her novels but you do own some I own one I own Half of a Yellow Sun uh, it has been sitting on my TBR for quite a long time I was very excited to read it when I bought it but it's just one of those ones that I, I was also excited about ten other books at the same time so it hasn't gotten read you have hauled significantly more books than you've read this year because you've been so excited about so many books <sighs> totally true but I just um I I don't know if I'm gonna unhaul that or read that I haven't decided that yet but if I do read it I won't be reviewing it and I won't be discussing it yeah because I don't want to I certainly won't be sending any more money with her way and I won't be discussing her work as if it's from someone who's not a big so is she essentially just an extension of Turfling? I mean, she's essentially just, I approve this message, like... Yeah. So... Because I would... I would forgive her if she came out and apologised and said she was wrong. Yeah, but I, w- I, would, f- I would forgive Turfling if she came out and said she was wrong and apologised. I would have trouble with Turfling at this stage. She has done so much damage, she would have to... She has, but I don't... I don't actually care. You could literally... 
You could literally be Hitler, and if all of a sudden you realise that human beings are human, and you feel the weight of the appropriate weight of guilt for your previous actions, and and express regret, then you have learned a lesson, and you. It's not my job to punish people for their past acts, and I. I don't want to listen to bigots talk, but if you have learned to not be a bigot, if I feel like everyone has a learning curve. Well, yes, everybody does have a learning curve, and we need to allow for people to learn later in life. And sometimes, we, like somebody like Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie, she's in her early forties. She's very intelligent. She should know better, but as somebody who is getting very close to their early 40s, I, I am making more and more errors because of when I was brought up and I have to be more and more conscious that things are changing and the way that I am used to things being is not correct, where with younger people they have come into the world, they're much more... Yeah. You know, there are so many terms that I would have used five years ago that are just unacceptable. Unacceptable. Um, and there's so many times in our just our frank, normal conversations here that I've had to edit out words that one of us have said. And I mean, where I don't edit out fuck in in yeah, this. Yeah, it's yeah. So like we're talking, we know we know what sort of words we're talking, but they're just words that were acceptable that we never questioned because our peers used them and now that we're questioning them we're struggling to break that habit and and i think that when people get a bit older they often struggle to get out of the mindset of the the generation that they're in yeah for sure i, I also uh, i i think there's uh, the generational change in attitude is actually just so much bigger a mountain than we ever think it is and I look at my parents who consider themselves to be progressive you know when they were growing up and, and they're not, not not by today's standards by any stretch of the imagination um, but do they try and do they learn and you, you know like you can't you can't dismiss people because they've only just learned and I think that if Chimamanda or the Turfling or anyone who got a, has, has been on the wrong side of the fence changed their tune you'd have to give them another chance yeah and I think I think like we, we do have to give them another chance but I think the other side is Chimamanda Ngochidichi is part of the bookish community she would have to deliberately be avoiding the conversation around turfling to, to not know what's going on no she, and she's like she's literally put her stamp of approval for, on this for her to be ignorant at this stage is I, I don't understand why you would publicly declare that you're a turf and this isn't this isn't her this isn't a like a slip no this is actually a considered statement and that's you know that's the difference i think i think you know if you say something terrible and it's a slip and you apologize but you've actually thought about it so i think she would really need to repent yeah if she if she wants to be i would like i would forgive her if she she apologized but i would want her to apologize and then do something positive for the trans community um you know build a, a shelter for beaten trans people in in Lagos or something like you know yeah I get what you're saying you want some demonstration of change rather yeah. than just words and and I, that's what I want from Chimamanda from JKT I would like like she is a billionaire I would like a much bigger yeah contribution contribution 
Um, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but they would have to actually change their tune for this to be like a relevant setting of the bar. And neither of them are go going to, because they have both made conscious choices to cross this line into um, advocating for the persecution of trans people. And... And it's very rare for somebody in that situation to change their mind, isn't it? I mean, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand why anyone would consciously advocate for the persecution of a group of human beings. I'm like, why? Yeah, it's it's just terrible. It makes like it makes no sense. Have they got some kind of turf club that they have to? The only I can just I just qualify don't... to be a member of by being an ass in public. Like I. I just don't think they're listening. I don't think they're listening to trans people. I mean, unfortunately, I think they are listening, and they're, they're just listening to bigots. Mm -hmm. And I do think that there's, there's a significant amount of really worrying support for this kind of bollocks idea. I know, do you know what? There is one more thing I want to say. I think there would be a lot of people out there that'll say, you clearly can't separate the art from the artist. And... I think... It's our responsibility to penalise bigots. Yeah, I don't want to separate the art from the I can separate the art from the artist. I yeah. don't and, want to. And honestly, if she was dead, then yes, I would. Because it's not... She's not going to learn any lessons from me not buying a book when she's dead. You know, it's not going to change her ideals. And it's not going to reflect as a... As supporting her ideas. If she's dead well but she's not dead she's still out in the community advocating for bigotry against human beings and I, I even disagree with that the adoration of problematic figures makes it seem like it's okay to be yeah like it's not a big deal to be a bigot yeah and there's and so many people you know so many people that get away with it that are dead but that they're idolized by other people and then yeah you know so that's that's what, and the other thing is why are we why are we reading and there's a few reasons why we're reading but one of them is to enjoy the books we're reading and even if she's the best writer in the world i'm going to enjoy books that she didn't write so you know yeah it's definitely like she's not the last book in the pile and why would you choose from someone who's a bigot if you have other options yeah that's that's and it. if you don't have other options then maybe that's a different discussion but i don't think it is well, yeah we're not we're not scarce for books so why are we yeah yeah set the bar high and also i think like set the bar high on who you let into your brain like is the, the books that you read form and sh and like and the people you associate with and the ideas that you are interested in that's what forms what's in your noggin like don't let the bigots in and if you don't think that the books you read don't have an influence on your views then you're ignorant and naive yeah and I mean yeah yeah, I, I mean, that's a little bit simple, that, but... It's... I definitely, like, I, I think you should read the books of your enemy, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, I do think... They don't necessarily convert you to their point of view, but they do have an effect. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that if you're a communist, you should never read anything capitalist or... Yeah, yeah. Or that we shouldn't read Mein Kampf, like, there's things to be learned from those things, but... I, I think there's a difference between that and reading the fiction of someone who is a bigot who may not overtly be discussing their bigotry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's wrap it up there because I think it's a long enough video now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Scott wants to stop talking. <laughs> I just don't want it to go for 40 minutes. Um, what do you think? Tell us the things. How much Chimamanda have you read? Are you sad? Yeah. And who's an author that you're boycotting? Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. 
also don't buy Nestle. Okay, bye. Bye.